Between what Carrie just talked about and what the Federal and Highway Administration and what we face, because everything that she was talking about, we can echo from a domestic front. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's get started here. Um, the first thing I want to do is give you some things to think about. Um, most users of a highway system, are you focused on that highway or are you focused on something else? And I hope that the answer to that is, I care where that hospital is. I care where my house is. I'm focusing on those things that are in the ends of roads. I'm not really focused on that road. In fact, the thing that I want to do is get off that road as soon as I can. All right? But when you turn that around to people in transportation agencies, we're there to manage those roads. We really don't care about getting you to where you want to be. We care about more about the experience when you're on that road. Is that road rough? Are you sitting in traffic? We want to start alleviating some of those problems. OK, something else to think about. Um, I'm a civil servant. I work for the Federal Highway Administration. And I exist to keep bad things from happening. That's my ultimate goal. That's Carrie's ultimate goal, is to keep bad things from happening. And when a bad thing does happen, we want to return that system to normalcy. Okay? We're going to do that um, through a policy and innovation. We're going to try and do this in the most efficient manner we possibly can. And we're going to remain accountable and transparent to the public. That's it. That's what the purpose of our government is. That's what the purpose that I feel my job is. Okay, now we're going to put a whole bunch of bureaucracy and regulations and everything in the mix. But ultimately, this is what we're trying to accomplish. So the purpose of my talk here is really just to introduce a program that Federal Highways is really just starting. And we're going to try and see how we can get um, OpenStreetMap to partner with us and how we can partner with OpenStreetMap. Um, like I said, I'm with the Federal Highway Administration. I'm down in Washington, D.C. I'm in a policy office, and I deal with information. Um, we interpret the, the law, and we put out regulations and um, directives to state DOTs. Um, specifically, I give directions about what kind of data that I need to fulfill whatever law is out there. Um, one of the things that I, I put this note there, um, the present attitude of Federal Highway is all data needs to come from the state DOT. It's unwritten, but it's just the general attitude that we have. Um, I'm a program manager, and I have two data programs that I manage. I manage something called the Highway Performance Monitoring System. We'll talk a little about that, but think about that as attributes on a highway. And then I've got this thing that we just created called Arnold, which is within HPMS, and that Think about that as the spatial network that's going to be the glue to tie all this stuff together. Okay, so let's talk about the federal, uh, the, uh, the highway performance monitoring system. It's basically 63 different attributes about highways. It could be a road condition in terms of cracking or rutting or how rough that road is. Uh, it could be median type information, lane widths, if there's parking on that road, what kind of parking it is, how wide is that shoulder. Um, there was a, 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 some things about a blog uh, last week on uh, somebody was uh, doing a, uh, a bicycle tour out in the West, and they were wondering what kind of, uh, um, is, was there any information to get those, those shoulder widths? Okay? We actually have a way of getting that. Okay? So with that, um, the reason why we need to collect all this data is we apportion federal highway funds to state DOTs. And it's by formula of how many roads they have in the state. Okay, so we need to know this information. We need to have that complete inventory of where this is. Um, it's something called the Certified Public Miles, um, and they get basically 25 bucks for every mile they got in, the, in their state. Okay, so that's how much funding they get back. So when you're talking about several thousand, hundred thousands of miles in that state, you're seeing a lot of money going back. So it's at, there's a lot of things at stake here. We're also starting to engage in performance measures. 
Are we looking at and holding states accountable to whether um, their road conditions are improving over the next years? Are we reducing fatalities on those roads? Okay. So we need a lot of this information to really handle those, those bad things that are happening. Okay. Um, we need to geolocate fatal and serious injury crashes. That's part of that performance measure. Um, the other thing we need to do is start plotting where the highway projects are. And up until, we, we really can't do that right now. And this is one of the things that we're going to um, venture into. So I want to talk about a, per, a perfect storm that happened over the last five years. Well, the first thing that happened was the Office of Management and Budget, which is the arm that really, um, it is basically the White House that says, this is what you can do and what you can't do. And they wanted to um, establish, uh, they have these things called circulars. And circular A16 regards spatial information. So they've divided up all of the different themes. There's a transportation theme, a cadastral theme, a boundary theme. And they've put transportation, the USDOT, in, in charge of the, the transportation theme. So go figure, that probably worked. Um, the next thing that came out, I'm going to shift over to this thing called NISGIC. And who these guys are is the National States Geographic Information Council. These are the uh, geographic information officers of every state. They usually work for the governor's office. And they're an organization that is very um, interested in seeing these national efforts come. And one of their ideas was something called transportation for the nation. Um, their goal was to get a public data set that's authoritative and that's free and open um, of all of the highways and roads in the US. Okay. Then we have this thing called Map 21. That is the highway authorization bill. And what that does is it puts um, safety and performance of, of safety at the top of the chart in terms of importance to what we care about. And one of those clauses in there was we need a base map to support every crash no matter where it happens. There's an existing program now, and it's called HPMS. I just talked about that and what that was. The last thing, the linchpin to this whole thing, is the GAO, which is the Government Accountability Office, um, came out with a report. And I've got to tell you that the thing that strikes more fear into any executive department is when the GAO comes out and says that you're doing something wrong. Well, what they did is they looked at spatial information and they, said, they decided that there are too many highway networks around in the, in the country. There's private sector networks, there's state DOT networks, there's state networks. There were four networks sitting at Federal Highway itself, and they wanted to bring all of that together. This all happened in a course of two years. So all of these things led to this thing called Arnold. Arnold is called the All Road Network of Linear Reference Data. And on August 7, 2012, there was a directive that said each state DOT had to com uh, supply a complete set of all of their roads to Federal Highway to meet all of these things that I just talked about. It also said um, we are going to be working towards this is the single network that is going to be the authoritative source for all of this. Um, there's 4.1 million miles of roads in the US that this applies to. We want a dual carriageway representation, meaning that on an interstate and divided facilities, we want two lines represented rather than a single center line. We want this in the public domain. How, how does this look like open street map right now? It's very similar, very, it's, 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 the goal is the same. The only difference is when it comes out of the federal highway, it is authoritative for the rest of the federal government. So what we want to do is, oh, and the other difference is, is something called linear reference data. Now, how many in the room know what linear referencing is? OK, so it's about maybe 30%, uh, 30, 40%. So 
I will bore you for a second, and the rest of you. Um, here's a, a little two-minute synopsis of what this is. Okay, so supposing you have a road, and that road has mile points on it, and those points on this, this graphic are showing those mile points. And within your network, you have an X and a Y coordinate. But then we're going to add a third one, which is called an M, which is a measure. And that measure is the distance from that first point. Okay, so I put those M measures on this, on this line. That line also has a route ID. So in this case, it's I-50. And that's just a name that references that line and that has those measures to it. Within there, you also have data that you can now start attaching to it. So if we have a project ID that um, references um, route ID I-50, it goes from mile point seven to mile point 17, and then we can start putting those and plotting this stuff on there. This is the way every state Department of Transportation and USDOT puts attributes on the highway network. It is not done by XY. This is what they do. Um, we have to be able to, to account for that. Okay, so with that, there's a federal highway need for all of this. We're going to track system changes. We have to put the National Bridge Inventory on this thing. So all of our bridges have to be plotted. They're all over the place right now. Um, we had uh, the entire state of Illinois was located up in Canada, if you looked at the bridge data. Okay. Um, federal land management areas, uh, the National Park Service, BLM, Forest Service, Fish and Wildlife, all of that stuff is going to be put on this network because they're held to the same laws that the rest of the states are. We need to get exposure data for public health. How many people live close to an interstate? Is that affecting the um, uh, cancer? Is that affecting some of the health things that are, that are going on by their very location to high volume roads? Where are those high volume roads? This is the data that they're going to come to. Um, we need to reduce uh, um, congestion. So we've got to identify where capacity is. And all that is done through, through spatial methods. Um, and we need to route freight. Okay, so that's, that's where roads are. The rest of the USDOT, we're looking for bus and transit. We're looking for where pipelines are. Can we get those inspectors to those pipelines to do what they need to do? When they do and uh, have a problem with pipeline, are they gonna dig up a road to, get, to do that? We care about rail crossings. Go back to that first slide I showed you with the train wreck, right? That was in Oxnard, California. That happens probably every other week because somebody, a truck cannot get across that rail crossing. We need to know where these things are. And uh, that's, that's part of the, the DOT mission. Um, we need to know where the international crossings are. Not so much from DOT, but um, Department of Homeland Security needs to have how many people are coming through those borders. And then we're just starting to get into bike and, and pedestrian um, routes. Uh, I hope that, I, I can guess that a lot of you in the room are bikers just by the nature of OSM. Okay. Um, DOT is finally caring about that. And oddly enough, when we put a, a call out to comment on our, uh, our latest uh, um, ruling, we had 13,000 responses to the safety measure. Um, 11,000 of them came from the bike, in the bike lobbyists. All right, so this is, we're, we, we just got a wake up call on that. Um, so why are we interested in OSM? Okay, hey, we've got the state DOTs are, are doing their job. Well, the fact is that state DOTs care about state roads and we have to go back to that first thing that I told you. State DOTs care about your experience on the road. They don't really care about getting you from A to B. And that's a reality, all right? So OSM is that piece of that puzzle. It's public, it's credible. Um, you start comparing the stuff from OSM to the stuff that the states have, it's more current. 
um, it's connected. The stuff that we're getting from the state DOTs are not connected right now. We need to start working on that. And quite frankly, um, you all are doing this because you're passionate about it. Um, we're doing it because it's our job. And quite frankly, when you put passion into it, you're going to do a better job. There's just no argument on that one. Um, the other thing is state DOTs don't get down to that local level because it's really not in their scope. But at the national level, we care about the entire transportation system. And this is where you are getting your neighborhoods into this system. So what we want to do is start partnering with you and seeing if we can start grabbing your data and start mixing it in with our data and so we can get a complete picture and then put some authority behind it. So how can OSM benefit from us? We've got data. We've got free data. We've got public, and it's open, and you can do whatever you want with it. Um, it's, uh, we have partnerships from every state DOT. We're starting to get a lot of partnerships from local agencies. Okay. And the last thing is we have standards. Okay, so when you want to know what a, a lane width, we can put a standard out there and says, this is how you collect that data and this is what that means. Rail, they're doing the same thing. So I, I was reading something in the OSM logs that people are now interested in rails. Well, we're putting the GPS unit on the train. You can't get anything better than that. Okay, so um, we will be publishing that um, and we're also coordinating that with, with the, the highways. Okay, um, earlier this spring, we had a summit, national address summit in Maryland um, to talk about how to get addresses on there. Um, pretty much addresses don't um, fall into the DOT realm, but we have the network that should support that. We've been having a lot of the OSM people in the room with those discussions of how we can do that. And so, um, and they were also looking about how we started Arnold and can that be applied to how we're going to start addressing. So there's some resources here. Um, there's a field manual that tells about all the attributes. Um, a lot of this stuff is just queer, just Google on this stuff. Um, I, I do, it's all out on the web, but it's probably, nobody's going to write any of that down. Um, the shape files are available on the web, Google HPMS shapefiles, and you can have this data. Um, there's an Arnold reference manual. I have about five of these. If anybody wants to get started tonight, come and see me. <laughs> Most people will just look at it on the web, and you can do that. Um, the other thing that I, I really want to stress is that there is absolutely nobody from DOT on that list of attendees at this conference. And that, to me, is a problem. The other thing is we have conferences and we don't have OSM people there. So what I want to do is, is invite you to come to these. Um, one's in Austin, Texas in November, and the other is down in Raleigh, the GIST is you can mix and mingle with all of the DOT GIS people that are doing this. And so we can start building this broader community. You can always talk to me. I'll talk about this all day. If uh, that sign that was telling me I was out of time wasn't coming up, I would continue for another hour. So at any rate. Um, and then the last thing I want to leave you with is we created this Arnold thing, and state DOTs have been sending me what this thing means to them. Um, they've been pulling out every piece of Americana to send, and uh, I've been collecting this stuff. But I think the other point is um, that little guy in the lower right-hand corner, um, if you're under the age of 37, or if you had kids under the age of 37, you know who that is. If you're in any other category, you have no idea. But this is the... The people that recognize that character are the people that are going to make this thing happen. And so um, I just want to leave you with that. I'm 52, so I'm really not in that category. But. And uh, with that, I'll open this up for questions.
Yes, sir. In, in Can you hit your button? Just wait one second. Uh, in a student map, if you need a uh, character from the US Department of Transportation, you need uh, liner limb plating, you need deterioration of railway to help to improve railway okay. and overhaul USA. All right, um, the question is about linear referencing. To create improved bullet train, to create bullet train in all over US if we get budget from federal government. I, 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 I'm sorry, I just. No, talk about to create better railway train, yeah, talk about uh, better railway train, train path. Rail, rail path. Oh, railroad? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm missing. I think it was about twin railroad paths. You know, oh. all over your... Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I just know very little about what the rail people are doing. We, we are one DOT, but we're really separated. I mean, I'll be honest with you. So um, we can put you in touch with the rail people, and they can certainly start that conversation with you. I know that they've got a project to get every rail located, and they're putting the GPS units on the trains to get where those rails are. The big problem with rail is a lot of this stuff is private, and they don't want people to know where their comp competition is. And it's not really where their rails, where their lines are, it's what they're carrying. Okay. So, yes, sir. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. sorry. Hi, um, my name is Bobby, I'm from Bloomberg. Um, companies like us are really excited for this type of stuff, but we, I'm curious to know how real time is this information and why aren't you or when will you serve this up as like a web service type thing that we can consume directly for our users? Okay, um, we've been at this since 2012, okay, which is only a couple years ago. We, um, like Carrie said, I spend probably 80% of my people, my time telling other people what GIS is and how it, people benefit from it. Right now, it's just a cool idea, but they don't realize that, no, this is essential stuff. And it's a tough sell when somebody wants to put their name on a bridge and get that publicity as opposed to doing something that is data-related and really is anybody going get, to get at that. Um, so um, the, real, the reality is, it's a yearly submittal that we get from state DOTs. We would like to go transactional on that. This is one of the benefits, and I didn't add that to one of my benefits for OSM, because that is real time, all right? So how can we partner so we can maybe have OSM in the forefront and then make it author put some authority behind it after it gets vetted and, and, and whatnot? Um, so um, I guess um, I, I hope that answered. <laughs> Yes, sir. Is that good? Yeah. Oh, so how does uh, Arnold potentially relate to Tiger? Okay. Um, what we said with Tiger, um, we have a, a weekly conversation with, with the geographic division of Tiger, or of, of the census. And the thought is that once we get Arnold mature enough, we feel that census should be using that as a source. We're not out to replace uh, the tiger because they have to merge and make that topologically um, connected to all the other layers. But we would like Arnold to be that source for them to do that. Um, so they are on board with talking to us. We're on board with talking to them. And eventually, um, we, we expect that Arnold will soon take the responsibility within the Federal Geographic Data Committee and all the bureaucracy. That's tied to that. So let's go to the back. Uh, yes, let's see. Uh, the, uh, I was just wondering, in, in your view of, of what the relationship would be between your department and the OSM, is it sort of that you would be um, serving up data of some sort, or would it be that you would actually have like an OSM liaison to, to help build the community of people and, and you know, be the interface between the data and the OSM projects? Our partnership with OSM 
is about two months old, if that, okay? And that partnership was me calling Alex one day. He came by our agency and we talked about this. And I think the first thing that we're gonna do is start tiling OSM behind Arnold so at least our collectors and our data providers can see that there's differences and maybe identify where those discrepancies are so that the DOT can go and check that out and hey, maybe, maybe you have that wrong. I think it's three. Huh? Maybe not. Wait, wait till it turns red. You could do that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, excellent. Huh? Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, <laughs> um, my name's Danielle. I'm with um, Nelson Nygaard um, Consulting Associates, and we are also a transportation um, planning agency. So I'm really happy that there are more um, transportation folks here. And my question is, you made a point that um, there's different conferences, uh, transportation folks don't necessarily talk to OSM, and this is a thing that I'm definitely trying to bridge to. So I'm curious to see um, how receptive is USDOT and other state agencies and whatnot in incorporating OSM, because from my experience, it's been very much more like ESRI, NGI, um, ESRI and like ArcMap and all that based. Okay, right now, um, I personally am very interested in the open source community. We've been looking at Boundless, we've been looking at QGIS, we've been looking at Postgres, PostGIS, and those types of solutions to what we need to do. Um, it's gaining momentum, all right? And I, I don't want to say that there'll ever be a replacement for Esri. Um, maybe there will, I don't know. And that's not really our goal, but we think there's a lot of alternatives in there that, that we can start looking at. And it's, it's these kinds of things that are going to make the community better rather than relying on one one in you know one one group of, of people to, to do this. So um, and I don't know if I strayed and gave you more opinion than I should have, but um, did I answer? Yeah, okay, great. Okay. Somebody's waving very enthusiastically back there. Hear me? Hi. Um, so I work uh, for Dama Consultants out in Chicago, and we're working on a statewide traffic congestion study for Illinois Department of Transportation. So this is probably one of the talks I was most looking forward to. I have a ton of questions, but um, one in particular that I stick to is like, uh, what I see constantly, and I'm sure you'll agree, is, as you said, like a lack of understanding of GIS and how it can be relevant among the state agencies. And a lot of that, I think, is that their focus isn't on technology or on data. I mean, they've been building and maintaining roads for, for decades. And so there's a really, there's like a lack of understanding which comes from, I think, the priority of that agency. So I wonder how you deal with that and in particular with uh, even like infrastructure funding, for example, is such a major issue. And if on top of that, these state agencies are supposed to be learning how to, or, or bringing on board people who have these skill sets or who can, I mean, it'd be great if, if uh, FHWA like made an API for access to you know, Arnold in the future, but if no one knows how to access an API, it's kind of beside the point. And so I wonder if there's been talk about providing funding or training or advocacy so that the state DOTs can really start to see the benefits and really push for like an open data platform uh, and actually know what they're asking for. Okay, well, I, I guess, um you know, the Obama administration has made open data a key part of that. So no matter what else you think about that administration, I think that's a positive thing for our community is to get this data out in the public arena uh, with no strings attached. Um, I want to go back to the Bloomberg question um, in terms of getting this stuff out in web services. We're fighting a... Um, a pretty much a, techno a, a technological battle at DOT to get that done. However, that is the goal of wanting to do that. And I think we have some ambitious people at the, at the leadership that are trying to, to get, that, get that out there. Um, so I, I, I'm hoping the tide will change really um, quickly to get, get this stuff out in the, in the, the public arena. How do you convince um, a manager, a pavement ma engineer that data is more important than smoothing his, his one project. 
I don't know the answer to that. Um, really, um, you know, that's, that's the bane of my existence when I go to work every day is, is really just convincing people that we're not here to spend more money unwisely. We're here to help you spend money more efficiently. And it's a tough sell because you can't see data. You can see a bridge. And uh, I, I don't know what the answer to that is. Um, I think, how are we doing on, are we done in time? We have, okay, let's take one more question and then I think uh, we have to get you out. <laughs> and I gotta operate the mic. I think it's, is it three? I don't, I don't. It's the button right under, okay, wait till it turns red. Okay, good. Okay, um, so this is really exciting. Um, what I have to say is that I'm a master in city and regional planning student, and you have so many of us graduating who want to work for, the, for you. Right. Um, and we're learning ArcGIS um, because we have to, um, and we're be, you know becoming more and more. Well, it's true. Um, no, we put out projects like mm -hmm. every every semester. You, you're mm -hmm. taking a course and you're putting out demographic data using ArcGIS. Um, and there's so many of us that are excited about it that we would be open to using, you know, open data. So have you thought about partnering with universities? Um, have you thought about partnering with graduate programs, um, University of Maryland, we Rutgers, you know, Blaustein School, and simply say to them, look, you know, we have this need, there is this data, we know you have kids who are really passionate about this, let's make something happen. We partner with all kinds of universities, we have that program. We, I mean, that's, that's being done. We have internships that, that allow you to come in and, and spend the summer with us to do this type of work. Um, so yes, I mean, we, we, we've thought about it and I think we're actually pretty successful of doing that. So um, I, I know where you're, my daughter's a, a, a room planning that's looking for a job right now as, as well, so. Well, no, it's not looking for a job, but I mean, it's getting her that experience in this area to do that. And yeah, we are partnering with universities to do that, so. so. Okay, so I think with that, I appreciate you uh, listening to what I have to say this morning.